Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft channel. Ever since my childhood, I've had a strong interest to be out here in the woods, whether I was out here for camping or to fish, hunting or to bushcraft. And even long before I knew the term bushcraft, I was doing those things. Um, and even since being a child, I've had a survival mindset. I've always wanted to learn survival skills and to have a survival kit, so to speak, have the right equipment so that when I was out here, even if I were out here for an extended period, I'd have the right stuff to be able to make myself comfortable and to survive. Several months back, a good friend and fellow instructor, Sean Kelly from Corporal's Corner, and I'm sure most of you are very familiar with Sean's channel here on YouTube, he did a video about his top five survival comfort items. And I liked the idea behind that video, and it made me uh, kind of want to shoot a similar video. So I thought I would do that today, is share with you guys the five comfort items that I've found that that I really don't like coming out in the woods without for any length of time. These are five items that are absolutely not essential, but they're five things that help me enjoy my time in the woods more and make me more comfortable when I'm out here. And for me, that's really what being out here is about now more than anything. It's not about coming out here to test myself and see how little I can get by with. There's merit in doing that every so often, but for me, most of the time when I'm in the woods, I'm out here to enjoy myself. And so I don't want to be miserable. I want to be comfortable and enjoy some basic things that help me to do that. So these are five items that I found that are non-essential, but essential to me to have a good time out here in the woods. So stick with me and I'll show you each of these items right now. All right, so number one on my top five comfort item list has to be my Kapilka number 37 cup. This is a phenomenal cup to carry in the field and I don't think I've been in the field many times without it in the last several years. The beauty of this is it's made out of um, a composite material which is basically impervious to everything. I run this thing in my dishwasher, doesn't phase it. Um, it's just a great cup. I, I put it in my backpack, it gets banged around on other gear, I've dropped it. It just, this stuff is indestructible it seems. I've had more traditional cookses that are made out of wood and especially in cold weather, you go fill it up with hot water when the fibers have kind of shrunk because of the cold. It heats up, the fibers expand and it cools off again once you've drunk your coffee and those wooden cups have a tendency to crack sometimes in extreme conditions like that. This stuff, impervious to everything. Again, you just really can't tear it up. And it holds 12 and a half fluid ounces, so it's perfect for a big cup of coffee. I've used it as a soup bowl. I've used it as a mixing bowl for things like pancake batter and making a uh, bannock and things like that. Just use this as a mi mixing bowl for small batches. So it is just a useful item. It doesn't weigh much and I always enjoy using it. I love sitting around the fire at night drinking a hot cup of coffee or tea or whatever, cocoa, whatever. This is just a comfort item and around camp and around the campfire I just like to have it. So number one, the Kapilka number 37 cup. Awesome piece of kit. Number two on my list and closely related with that Kapilka cup is my S-Pro Ultralight Coffee Press. And the beauty of this is number one, you always get a perfect cup of coffee with this coffee press, but it also gives you a vessel to carry your coffee in. Um, if I make coffee and I put it in a Kapilka, I basically have to stay in place and drink that coffee or pour that coffee out. But with this bottle, not only can I brew up a perfect cup of coffee, but I can carry coffee. And it keeps this warm for hours because it is a double layer or vacuum sealed bottle, insulated bottle. Um, it also could be used in the field for making infusions, medicinal infusions, things like that, or brewing teas. Has a metal filter basket. It's actually a double filter basket here. So it does a great job of filtering out coffee grinds or plant material if you're using it for infusions. You can see just a, a lined or insulated vacuum sealed bottle. So again, the beauty of this is once I brew up my coffee, I can keep it in here, carry it in my pack and just sip coffee while I'm moving. Um, and it's just a convenience. Again, it makes perfect coffee. I have a full review on this particular device if you'd like to see that on my channel, but something that's well worth having and I carry it with me often into the field. Number three on my list and probably closer to an essential item is my Grail water filters. And I own three of these, two of the GeoPress, which is the full size filter, and then this one, the Ultralight, which is my newest of my Grail products. But all of them are amazing. They all do the same thing basically, which is disinfect water within eight to 10 seconds. You simply 
uh, and I actually have water in this one right now, but you simply remove the cover, scoop water from a raw source, and just press it down, and it pushes water up through the filter. The Grails filtration cartridge is among the best filtration you can get for a system like this. Filters out 99.9% .9 of all viruses, bacteria, protozoa, chemicals, heavy metals. Um, this really does a, a top job on disinfecting water in the field. As for filters, this is about as good as you can get. Of course, the best and most surefire way to make water safe in the field is to first filter it with a pre-filter, then filter it, and then boil. But that can be very labor intensive. And sometimes, especially in hot weather, it's just not convenient or conducive to do so. So again, when you just filter water and drink it, this is among the best you can get. I also like this type of system because you can carry water in it so you don't have to filter it with a with a bag or some type of device like that into another container you filter it and drink it all from the same container that means I have to carry less things with me and uh, again it's just convenient so the grail water filter is definitely one of my top comfort maybe essential type items Moving right along, number four on my list of comfort items has to be my firebox nano stove and one of the things I really like about the stove is it's made in the USA. This is the stainless steel version of this stove. Um, and although there is a lighter version in titanium, I have no problems with the weight of this stove. Uh, it doesn't bother me or add any unacceptable weight to my pack. What I love about this firebox stove is, especially right now in summertime, it's hot down here in the south. And the last thing I want to do when I go in the woods is to light up a big fire and have to burn wood down to create coal so I can cook. This allows me, with minimal fuel and not having to sit by that hot campfire, this allows me to cook using natural material, using the wood that's available to me in the forest. There's nothing wrong with things like the MSR pocket rocket stove, which I have, but then I have to carry the stove, I have to carry the fuel canister, uh, or I carry an alcohol stove, I have to carry a bottle of alcohol, but there's nothing wrong with those things. This just gives me the option of using natural fuels. This thing folds right up into this little pouch, which goes inside of my bush pot, so it takes up no extra room in my pack. Um, I just really love this little stove and in a recent video I demonstrated using like a two and a half inch piece of wood by about two and a half inches in diameter and with that I was able to create a rolling boil um, and I still had a burn time for some time after that. So with very minimal fuel you can cook a meal easily or boil water for coffee and things like that easily with this stove. And sometimes during the late summer, it gets very dry when drought sets in here in my area. And so lighting a fire can be dangerous in the woods. You, can, you know, there's always that threat of creating a fire that gets out of control in the woods. So this allows me to, to have less of a footprint, to have a smaller, safer, contained fire. So I just see a lot of merit in this firebox stove. And especially for summertime, I can see myself carrying this and using it every time I come out here. So number four on my list, the firebox nano stove awesome piece of kit and finally number five on my list of five comfort items and i do mean comfort items is this trekology aloof pillow 2.0 this is an air pillow i will be honest with you i have never carried a pillow into the woods i've always just used my backpack or used uh, a stuff sack with some clothing in it just thrown that behind my head and made do but once i got this pillow i swore to myself i would never camp without it again because it just makes me so much more comfortable and look at this it's tiny it, it basically takes no uh, space in my pack it really adds no volume and it weighs hardly nothing and it provides me with a ton of comfort so it's well worth carrying this simple little device to make my life happier in the woods um, once you open up this little stuff sack, you can fold the pillow out. And there's a couple of things that make this pillow excellent in my mind. And the first is that the back side of this pillow is covered in these little rubber dots here. You can see those, hopefully. They provide a lot of friction for the pillow. So when I lay this in my hammock, which is my preferred sleep system in the woods, hammocks tend to be slick. And before I'd stick a stuff sack full of clothes behind my head and it would just slide and slip around. I could never really get comfortable. But with this, these little rubber dots grab hold of that slick hammock material and they stay in place. They really hold their spot and it just helps me to get a more restful night of sleep. So that's one thing I really like about this. Another thing to me that's excellent is the way this valve is made. Basically, when you open it up, this has a device inside 
If you click it one way, it'll allow air to escape. If you click it the other way, you can put air in, but air cannot come back out. I'll demonstrate that for you right now. All right, so you can see I have my valve here and I have it in an open position. So I put some air in and you can hear the air is escaping. But if I simply press this button right here, now, no air is escaping. So I can take my time, although it only takes two big breaths to fill this thing. Now there's no pressure to get this latch closed. I just close it and no problem with air escaping. You can see what the pillow looks like. It's very well designed. Your head just lays down in this little divot here. This helps support your neck. Um, you do have this little elastic strap here. So let's say you're using an air mattress or something. You can use this to loop over your air mattress and kind of help keep this in place. Um, I haven't really used that feature. Um, I haven't needed it, but just a very comfortable pillow. I've even used this thing with just a little bit of air in it as like a seat cushion when I was sitting like on a bench and it just kind of, you know, gave you a little bit of comfort. Um, but just an awesome pillow and well worth its weight. Deflate and folding is very simple. Just squeeze the air out like this. And now we can easily fold this thing back up and put it back in a stuff sack. I'll show you that. Now that I've got the pillow laid back out flat, it's very easy to fold up and just make one two folds to bring me back to the center. Same thing on the opposite side. And now you'll see I have the valve on top there. And then I'll just simply roll this thing up, which will force any remaining air inside out. Hear a little bit coming out right there. And now I can simply close the valve and replace this in the stuff sack, just like this. Now that I have it back in the stuff sack, just seal it up. Has a little cord lock there. And this is ready to go back in my pack and I'm ready to be on the move. So once again, here's the sum total of my top five favorite comfort items to carry with me in the field. And I do work with a lot of gear and test a lot of gear in the field. And there's always a possibility that over time I may find items that I would replace these with. But as of to date, I've found nothing in each of these categories that I would rather have. To me, these represent the tops. And for the money that I've paid for these items and for the space and weight that they apply to my pack, I'm more than happy to carry these items because of what they do for me in the field. While I consider none of these things to be completely essential, they help me be more comfortable and enjoy my time in the woods that much more. All right, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick show and tell of my five favorite comfort items to carry out here in the woods. And I know personally, I always enjoy seeing other people's gear and the equipment they choose to carry. So hopefully this has been interesting to you. If you haven't had a chance, go and check out my friend Sean Kelly's video on his five favorite comfort items. I'll put a link to his video down below. And I know we had at least one item I think that overlapped, but interesting to see how different people choose different things. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will go ahead and subscribe. If you're interested in the equipment that you see me use, there's always links down below in the description box where you can find these things. And I always appreciate your interest, your time, and your support. Until the next video, as always, take care and God bless. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see similar content, please subscribe to the Black Hat Bushcraft channel. Thank you for your time and interest, and I hope you'll come back soon. Take care.